All right, so far we have seen how we can download or pull an image and create a container out of that image. And that container will act just like a virtual machine on our system. We can access it, we can connect to it, we can run commands against it, and so on. But that is not why Docker was created. And that's not how Docker works in real production environments. You usually download an image that provides some sort of functionality, like for example, a running application, a running web server, a running database server, and so on. Then you run a container or more out of this image and you use those containers to build an application stack. In the previous lecture, we saw how we downloaded the Ubuntu image from the official Docker Hub repository, and we used it to create just a bash shell on our system. Let's do something that is more exciting. We are going to create a web server using the light HTTPD server or lightly as it is called. It is a lightweight web server. We will, we will create an image that will provide this web server. And we are going to also create a simple index.html file that is going to serve it by the container based on that image. In order to create this image, we will need a base image on which we are going to place our light HTTPD server. We are going to use the Alpine image. Let's have a look at this Alpine image first. I'm gonna use Docker pull Alpine. Alpine is a version of Linux, a very minimal version of Linux. It is just four megabytes in size, as you're gonna see here. The FS layer, it's just two megabytes in size. When it is uncompressed, it is less than four megabytes in size. And it provides the bare minimum functionality that a Linux machine may have. So let's first create a container out of this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use docker run dash it can optionally specify a name here. I can say the main the main the name here is minimal. And the image on which this container is going to be based is the Alpine that we have just downloaded. And I will need to run slash bin slash sh. And I'll see here that I am using the slash bin slash sh rather than bash. That is because as I have just mentioned, the Alpine image is a stripped down version of Linux. A lot of things have been removed, including the shells that are available, including the bash shell, you are only left with the born shell, which is slash bin slash sh. What I'm inside, I can type slash cat slash edc slash os dash release. As you can see, Alpine Linux ID is Alpine and that's it. It's a very small image, very lightweight, okay? But it has everything that a typical Linux system requires. Let's exit, clear the screen. And we are going to use this image as a base for our light HTTP server image. So in order to do that, let's have a quick discussion about how an image is made up of. An image in Docker is made up of several file system layers stacked over each other. Every time you add a functionality or you add a file to your image, a new layer is created and is stacked above the previous ones. Docker is responsible for making you view this stack of layers as if it was just one layer, one file system, and it is serving everything that is underneath it. So for example, you might have a web server that is having one layer running the Ubuntu, another layer running the Apache web server. And if you have PHP installed, you might have a third layer running PHP and so on. If you have an image that is made up of those three layers, you will view this image as if it was one file system that contains Ubuntu, Apache, and PHP, just as if they are one machine. So in order to create an image with this concept, we will need at the minimum a file that is called Docker file. So in order to create an image, let's create a directory. I'm gonna call it light web for the name of the image. Let's get inside it. And as mentioned, you will need to have a, a file that is called Docker file. Notice that it is named exactly this way, Docker file with a D capital and Docker file without any spaces. Press enter to get inside this file. And inside this file, I'm gonna type the first command from Alpine. From Alpine instruct Docker that it is going to fetch the layer of the Alpine image. So it's gonna use the base of Alpine. And then after it grabs this, it's going to run. So I'm giving it the keyword run apk add, which is the command used by the Alpine Linux flavor to install light. HTTPD. Okay, so here I'm running the command. 
its APK and add dash dash update light httpd. This will update the repositories and install a package that is called light httpd. Then I will need to add some configuration to my web server in order to let it run correctly. So for that, I will have to create that configuration locally on my machine and copy it to the image when I'm building it. So I'm going to use the copy command for this. And I can write it in small letters, it won't matter, but just to, to keep things consistent and to differentiate between commands and arguments, I'm going to use uppercase for commands. I'm going to copy everything from slash e to c slash light httpd. This directory is yet to be created. I'm going to copy everything inside this directory to slash e to c slash light httpd on the image. This is for the configuration. I'm going to also copy the web files from var slash www slash html. Again, this directory is going to be created later on. I'm going to copy everything under this directory to slash var slash www slash html on the image. Finally, I'm going to expose 80, which is the port that I will need this image to expose when a container is run. And finally, I am going to type in the command that is going to let this container run in the background. So it's light httpd. This is the command itself. Notice here that I'm adding it inside a list with the command and the argument separated by commas and coated in double quotes. So it's light httpd d for the daemon mode dash f for the configuration file. And then I'm going to point to the configuration file that I've just copied which is under slash etc slash light httpd slash light httpd dot conf like this. Okay, and that is your Docker file. Let's save it. And now we need to create the directories that we have referenced inside that Docker file. So we have slash etc slash light httpd. I'm using mkdir-p in order to create any missing directories in the tree or in the path that I'm going to specify. So I'm going to create the slash e to c, the e to c slash light httpd. I'm going to also create the var www html directories. And the reason I'm doing this is just for consistency. I could have placed everything inside the, the, the root directory like this, and I could copy it one by one to their respective directories on the destination image. But this makes things consistent. This makes me always know which file belongs to which location. So let's now create the configuration file that is needed to start light httpd. I'm going to call it light httpd.conf as it is mentioned in the Docker file inside it. I'm going to just try it the minimum that is required for this web server to run. So the server, the document root, which is the location from which web files are going to be served is slash var slash www slash html server dot port is 80 server dot index files which is the file that will be served when no file is requested in the url instead of displaying the contents of the directory it's going to display the contents of this file if it exists then finally, you can add mime types dot assign, which is the mime types that this server is going that this web server is going to serve. And we don't have a lot. Just dot html is going to be served as text dash html. That's enough for now. I could have added, of course, other mime types. The list could go very long, and the, and a configuration file for light httpd server can become very long. I'm just giving it the bare minimum to start. Let's save and now let's add the file that is going to be served by our server. So in var slash www slash html, I'm going to create a file that is called index.html. Inside it, just add some minimal html like this html body h1. Welcome to light http server. Just like that. Let's close the body and close the HTML tags. And now I have everything in place. Now I can build whatever I want inside a Docker image and automatically import that image to the list of images that I have locally on the machine. So in order to do this, I'm going to use Docker build 
dash t for the tag and here i can name my image whatever i want so i'm gonna call it light web just like the name of the directory this is the best practice just to know which directory serves which images and i can optionally add a tag so i can add v1 for example then a dot a dot means that i want to apply this on the current directory which contains the, the docker file press enter and pressing enter is going to execute the instructions found in the docker file it's going to download and install light httpd package it is going to copy whatever was inside etc light httpd which is the configuration file that we added also anything under var www.html which is the index.html file to the respective directories in the image then it is going to instruct the container to run this command whenever it starts let's clear the screen and now if i run docker image ls i'm gonna see that i have a new image that has been added which is light web here as you can see it's here and its size is only 13 megabytes that is because it only contains the alpine package and the light web server notice here the difference between a virtual machine and a container a virtual machine just to serve light web http server like this one is going to be multiple times larger than this it's going to be at least one gigabyte in size why because you will need to install a fully fledged operating system like ubuntu or centos for example and you are also going to install this package on top of it but here i'm having a stripped down version of the operating system most of the things that you don't need for this application to run are just not shipped they are just not there they have been removed so you have the bare minimum to start an application and you are effectively consuming very less resources in terms of storage and also in terms of cpu and memory okay so now let's run a container out of this so we are going to run docker run dash d this time dash d means that i'm gonna run it in a detached mode or in other words i'm gonna run it in the background i don't want to attach a terminal to this container and dash dash name let's give it a name my light httpd and notice here that this container exposes a port this means that you will have network access to this container so i will have so i will need to inform my host about this port by adding the dash p and dash p here is gonna have the source port on the host which is 8080 and the destination port on the container which is 80 this means that if i want to access port 80 on the container i'll have to use port 8080 on my host and then you give it the name of the image which was light web just like that and notice here that when we forgot to add the tag it is giving us unable to find image light web dash latest locally that is because i will need to add colon v1 because this image is having a tag v1 so as a rule of thumb always remember to add the tag at the end of the image name just in case because maybe you want to target a specific tag and forgetting to add the tag will automatically let docker pull and initialize the latest tag of the image so running the command again with the correct tag okay now we have a container this is the id of the container this is the long version of the id because if you run docker container ls you're gonna see that this is a stripped down version of this id and you can always use that id instead now i have light web version 1 or v1 running running with this command and if i want to check it all what you have to do is just go to firefox and navigate to localhost dash Call on 8080. Okay, and this error means that we have something wrong with our MIME types. So let's cancel and go back to the terminal. Let's go to ESC and lighthttp.conf. Okay, there is a typo here. It's MIME type, not MIME types. Now we're gonna have to build this image again. But before we do that, we will need to stop the container. So Docker container ls. Let's take a copy of the container id and use docker stop then the id of the container let's make sure that it is gone okay now i will need to build the image again with the changes that i did to the file okay let's clear screen and now i will 
run the container again. Okay, notice here that it is giving me this error that we have a conflict. The container name mylight httpd is already in use. So in order to create another container with the same name, you will have to remove the container that you have just stopped. So I not only have to stop the container, but also remove it completely from my system in order to be able to run again a container with the same name. Notice the difference. Okay, now it is running. If I type gutter container ls, I'm gonna see that it is running again. And let's go to the browser. And let's go to localhost colon 8080. Okay, now I have welcome to light HTTP server. We have successfully created a web server using a container. It is using just 13 megabytes of storage. So that was just a quick introduction to Docker, what it is, how it can be used, and the, different, the main difference between using Docker and using virtual machines. In the coming sections, we are going to start developing a project in which we are going to see later on more and more features of Docker. We're gonna dive deeper into Docker commands, how the images are created and how the, how the storage is being managed, networking in Docker, security and other aspects. So until next section, take care.